China as well, you've still got uh, high 1010s, 1020s, and that's pushing the storm south. For instance, the northern tip of Luzon. <laughs> Welcome to our YouTube channel and today is November 1st, I, uh, I really don't know, it's, it's Sunday, I, hopefully you know your date. Uh, she was in her church class till noon so it's about 1.30. We're starting this because we're supposed to start seeing the stronger outer bands uh, now uh, heading up to, she just told me uh, Manila. It's signal number four now. Uh, but for everybody in America, uh, I know y'all probably sleeping. It's 1.30. I don't know when we're going to post this. If power stays on, we'll post it. Mm -hmm. um, but it made a dramatic drop. When it came on shore, the first island... It's Catanduanes, the first island. I can't pronounce it, you know, so she's going to pronounce them all. Catanduanes. It, um, it was 195. And it's a small island, of course, but it did hit the major population area there. So I don't know what's happening. We're not really getting feeds from that area. We're getting feeds from this area. And if you think, if you look at our area, you can tell it's a minimum 70 mile an hour hurricane that we get all the time in Louisiana. But we know there's a monster out there, and it's just a little further away than it's tracking. Uh, I don't speak Tagalog. She slept all night. But, so I don't know uh, uh, a lot of the stuff they're saying because, needless to say, they're speaking Tagalog, and it's in Tagalog on the screen. So I have to pick words here and there. But I'm going to take tracks of it like every 30 minutes for a couple of minutes just to show you the intensity increasing. Uh, and like I said, we're supposed to be in the eye, you know, but, but the eye is not there, of course, anymore. It weakened dramatically. I guess, just guessing off of the, uh, there's a weather service called Force 13 that I watched last night that speaks English. And uh, they were surprised themselves that it maintained its intensity of 195. They were really surprised all the way into landfall. And then they were even more surprised that as soon as it hit landfall, it immediately broke down. The eye broke down and started dropping in intensity, which was great for everybody. Because unfortunately, that one area took all the brunt. The rest of it's getting a more mild typhoon. It's going to be a three and four as it passes on. And they're expecting it all the way down to a one by the time it exits out the, uh, headed towards Vietnam. But, but there are several uh, places in the Philippines that's already flooded. Um, part of Bicol because the Bicol was signal number five last night. So well, Bicol was getting uh, getting hit early. It was uh, yeah. uh, last night. My cousin was um, doing a live. They're already in the evacuation center there because they are close to the ocean. So there are several uh, like in Albay. We saw this morning the news is already flooded. Uh, my main thing is like I said. Uh, I'm not too concerned with us because we talked about in our other videos that we feel pretty well protected. And uh, our area is a little bit higher if you're going to Manila, the yeah. area of Batangas is higher. Yeah, actually, if you, when you leave and out here, you know, on the uh, toll highway, you're actually looking down as you're driving towards Batangas. So Batangas ports a lot lower than we are. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I um, really just want to get the video started. Let you know we're going to be doing updates. I don't know when this will be posted. Uh, in America, it's 1.30 in the morning Eastern time, so I know everybody there is asleep. The Filipinos, I'm sure most of that area down there is without electricity now. Uh, she's got some notice that some people close to us have already lost electricity yeah. in our area. We're still hanging in there. We, uh, we can watch them. Yeah. While well, we're on a uh, uh, virtual uh, service in the church, one of the members said the uh, electric is already fluctuating, so... Anytime soon, this <laughs> to probably tonight. <laughs> yeah, but, just, but we are ready. We have uh, everything was charged. Yeah, we just had a big lunch slash breakfast. We hadn't eaten in like twenty hours. I probably told us a woman we got to eat. We ate yesterday. We got a little hamburger. Y'all <laughs> saw, and I don't even remember what time. Two thirty, three o'clock, and at twelve o'clock today, I looked at us and said, "We were almost gone twenty four hours without eating. That's long enough." You know, so we just picked us a really nice big uh, breakfast slash lunch, whatever the hell you want to call it, brunch. And uh, so we should be good to go, and then we're probably going to make a big pot of cabbage soup in case I'll the power goes out. Soup. And luckily, my sister helped me yesterday get my gas turned back on and all that stuff, so we, we're good on our gas. It's a brand new tank, so we don't have to worry about it running out. So as far as us going, I feel real safe, real confident that we'll be fine. 
other than if we lose power, you know, it's just an aggravation, it's not a problem. But for everybody else in America, my friends especially, be praying for the guys down there in that part that got hit by 195. I cannot imagine. I've seen 130s. I've seen 150s on my own eyes. I just... Yolanda before was 200, 15, something like that. I just can't imagine. And, and for people in America, you have to understand, most of those people live in those islands, live in bamboo houses. They don't have a structure. And a lot of them... You know, Their house is made of light material. Very light wood, them. gaps all between the woods. So you just can imagine 195 miles an hour. I mean, that's for us in our country, you know, that would just be unheard of, devastating. For them, you know, they're, they're not really that shocked about it. But uh, for me, when I people heard 195, people are used I just. Like, because that's the. Yeah, for, for America, the we, always pass by. when we get above 135 in America, we start thinking there's going to be catastrophic damage. For well built homes, nice brick homes. She's seen a lot of videos. I showed a lot of videos of Louisiana with the roofs being blown off and all these kinds of things. That's well built brick homes. You know, she's seen how much damage does on 130, 135 on the last couple of uh, hurricanes that hit my state. But here, 195 at 25 miles an hour, it was moving in. So, so, I mean, that, 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 my mind can't even comprehend the amount of damage that was uh, done. Actually, when I wake up this morning and I look in the window, there's still no rain. There is a shot, it's a sprinkle, but now the uh, um, wind is blowing so hard, the rain yeah, is... We get a lot of these out of bands. They don't really have what we have in America as far as keeping us posted with uh, the Weather Channel updates. Uh, they use local politicians. Brought our clothes inside. Yeah, they're, they're inside their comfort of their home or wherever they're at, and uh, they're they're trying to use secondhand information. And you know how it is. You talk to somebody on one house, they're gonna see one thing, and the world is falling. The world is falling. The guy next door is going, "Oh, this is fine. Not not bad at all." So one thing I miss is having the Weather Channel, having people out in the field that you can actually you know, get a really good sense of how intense the winds are. Because that's really my concern here, just the intensity for these branches. Because I won't go into it this morning, but I got really upset this morning. I actually took a, an aspirin and put it over because uh, somebody had a child out here in the middle of a storm. You know, she was in a church service, so I don't speak Tagalog, begging. You know, in the, in the middle of a storm, they sent a child, a child that looked no more than five, six years old. What kind of human being would do that? I will never know. I, I, my mind cannot comprehend a grown-up sending that child out in the middle of a typhoon. And I, begging for what? I have no idea. I couldn't understand. And they understand. passed by in the Barangay Hall. Right. And I, well, the Barangay Hall, that, that's, that, that, that's synonymous with joke. It should be, uh... Someone no. is taking care of that. But I, I don't really want to talk about that because I have mm. such intense feelings of that as a father. So what a human being is, is allowed to do and not allowed to do and to see what I've seen here uh, on a few occasions, it's just, it's, it's not, well, I can tell her all the time, I, I don't know what's going to happen when my day comes, but I know certain people that won't be sitting next to me, that's for sure. All right, uh, we're going to hold pause it here. And I, and I, now, we actually get a little bit of a lull right now. The sky's lighting up a little bit, but we're still about two hours away from the, say, the main it's, it's body. It's around five, to, 5 in the afternoon to 8 in the evening. So we'll keep yeah. updating, but right now we're good. And uh, didn't mean to get on safe. too long of an opening. Uh, we may edit some of this out. Uh, but we'll be sending some more posts letting you know we're safe. Talk to you in a little bit. Yep. It's here now. It's coming through now. Yeah, these are the strongest winds we've gotten. This is our about 2.30 update. Uh, we're still about two hours from the main body of the storm crossing over us. It stayed a little bit south and it looks like it may have slowed down a tad. Uh, if I had to guess right now, the gusts we're getting are still only in the 40 to 50 mile an hour range. We, we get a little burst every once in a while, it might be a little bit stronger. This big tree up here that I'm pointing at is taking a really pounding. Some of the big branches are already broken off of it, so it's really what's one I'm going by. Uh, banana trees and all that other little thin trees can be deceiving that big tree up there you get a watch on it and it'll bend it completely over 
And I don't know if you can see that branch off the side. It's already snapped it in half. That big branch over there is completely snapped in half. But we're getting these winds, of course, it's coming from that way, the east. That's why I'm always pointed this way. That's why you see the darker sky. We move from east to west, of course. But we got a little bit of lull here. So this is about the 2.30 update. Probably about an hour and a half we'll have the brunt of it. Okay, it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon here. 3 o'clock uh, p.m. Had a brain freeze there for a minute. Uh, had to make me some comfort food because the electricity just went out. So I made me a big old thing of potato salad to give us some comfort food. Uh, we still have our gas burner back here, so we'll be able to cook. You know, stuff like that. We're going to make some cabbage soup probably. But, uh... Three o'clock, about what I expected, the power's out. We're getting really strong gusts now. But luckily everything's charged. All of our phones are charged. All of our lights are charged, fans are charged. So we're getting really good, big gusts now. Just want to do a quick update. As you can see behind that school, it is really starting to come back here. We are so lucky to have these barricades. Yeah, that school was a two-story school, concrete building. All these buildings are concrete. So uh, earlier, you could just see this, the trees over there just bending. And the clouds are going in reverse circle in motion this time. Yeah, this is the hardest storm here, but luckily, as you can see, other than some, I, some metal roofs out here loosening up, are bouncing back and forth. We've been very lucky that I haven't seen any structural damage to anybody's house. I'll walk around with get a little bit drier, but uh, right now we've been very lucky. I can see the subdivision next to us. I haven't seen any structural damage and none here. And like I said, the winds here are 70, 80, 90 now. They're just throwing huge gusts. But I haven't even seen any broken glass, which is a good sign. So we should be only a few minutes from getting into the heart of it. Talk to you in a little bit. Your camera. <laughs> Your camera. Yeah, yeah, that's what I, actually, that's what I just said on camera. I'm afraid that tree's going to take those lines down. I don't understand why they didn't cut that tree down a long time ago. It doesn't serve no purpose. No, no, we've been out of power for over an hour. That tree there is the one that got me the worry. You got chips and stuff in there, right? Yeah. Mayonnaise? <laughs> There's the big one. There's the big one. Gigi over here freaking out. <laughs> That's one way to get your neighbors to move real fast. <laughs> yeah, this is it. Now the main part of the storm is here. As you can see, we got it coming now. The school roof is holding up really well. I'm glad for them. But that tree there is the one that has me so concerned. And but no, I'm not crazy. I have concrete walls on all three sides of me. Big concrete wall there, 30 foot concrete wall there. I'm surrounded by concrete. You can see as it's approaching now, it's just really a lot clearer. You probably can see it on the camera. The main part of the storm is right there. So, you can really see those trees up there. They're really feeling it. We probably now getting a gust between 80 and 100. Here's another one. And I just have a feeling that little miserable tree there is going to take down all of our power lines. I just do not understand why it wasn't cut down a long yeah, time ago. If you are here at the back, you can hear the whistle sound. Yeah, you see Gigi, she's making sure the door doesn't go anywhere. She's holding on to the door for dear life. If you're at the back, you can hear the whistling sound. Yeah, it sounds like a bunch of trains rolling through here. But we're going to let it pause for a minute. But this is what we were waiting on this here because this is stronger than we had 
we kinked her the other day. This is a lot stronger. These trees are being bent all the way over. And that area behind the school is really taking a pounding. Yeah, you're getting the rain mixed with the wind now. I just hope that little tree doesn't give way. All right, we'll take a little break. Check back in later. Hello, guys. I prefer the food early. It's better to cook early rather than eating in the dark. Here's Papa Bear. Cabbage soup and then do my noodles. Yeah, I make a cabbage soup and uh, mix with the uh, indomie noodles for the cold weather. Yeah, for and most we Filipinos, have... they're freezing to death, but for, for Americans, it's wonderful. It's very nice and cool, very comfortable outside. Romantic early dinner with candlelight. <laughs> and storm. And storm. <laughs> Okay, I guess I need to enjoy your food.